Hi guys, welcome. Welcome everyone. Two or three, and then we're gonna start. So just make sure you have all your supplies ready. All right, so this, this is what we're painting today. Okay, I'm gonna give everyone another minute and then we're starting. Yay, family paint night, that's fun. Awesome, okay, I think it's a good time to start. It's 6.34, so hopefully we have all of us, if not, um, hopefully whoever is missing will join us very shortly. And guys, um, maybe this is your first time painting with us. The video is going to stay up right here. So if you have to go somewhere today and you can't do the whole, you can't stay the entire event, um, or maybe you just find out about this and you're completely unprepared, that's okay. The video is going to stay right here so you can watch it anytime. doesn't have to be today. All right. So if we have everyone, let's start. Um, welcome guys, my name is Vera, if we haven't met before, I'll be your instructor for tonight and this is what we're painting. It is super fun, it is quite a complex painting, it has um, a lot of steps, <laughs> but they're all fairly simple. So once we break it into simple steps, it's not very complicated, but it definitely has quite a bit of steps here. First time, yes, exciting, welcome. All right, let's go through our supplies quickly and then we'll dive in right into the painting. So what you will need is, you're going to need a canvas, very important. I will be using 16 by 20 inch canvas. As you can see, it's pretty big. You can go smaller, you don't have to go as big as I'm going. Smaller size will work just fine, especially if this is your first time, or maybe you haven't painted in a while. After this, next thing you're going to need is painting water. So make sure you have some of that. You're going to need a paper towel or a cloth. If you have a reusable fabric cloth, that's great. If not, paper towel or napkin or toilet paper will work just fine. You are going to need a couple different brushes. I will be using three, large, medium, and small. And in my case, my large and my medium are square, as you can see. This is my large brush, this is my medium brush, and this is my small detailed brush. So this is what I'm gonna be using. If you guys have uh, brushes that are not square, that's okay, you can still use them, but it's good to have a couple sizes. So if you can, grab them. And another thing we're going to need is a palette or something to mix our paint on. So make sure you have that. And of course, we're gonna need paint to paint with. So I will be using primary colors only, which is yellow, red, blue, plus black and white, and I'll be mixing them into all shades that we're gonna be using here. However, if you would prefer to use pre-mix pre colors, that's okay, you can. You're going to need purple or maybe even a couple different shades of purple if you have that. You're going to need some uh, pinkish colors. You're going to need black, white, you're going to need yellow, and you're going to need uh, about a medium blue. So those are the colors you're gonna be using if um, you're using pre-mix paint. So, but if you have just primers, that's okay. You can mix along with me, I'll show you how. So guys, let me tell you how this is gonna go. We're gonna start with the background. The very first thing we're gonna start with is this light yellow in the middle. So we're gonna add light yellow in the middle and then we'll work our way to white 
and then we'll work our way to light purple. So it's a three color background on top. On a bottom here, we're gonna switch and instead of, this is gonna be circular, we're gonna circle it around. And here, we're gonna add horizontal lines. So we're gonna have some white here, we're gonna have light yellow, we're gonna have light pink, and we're gonna have medium blue. So those are the colors that are gonna go on this very bottom. Now, once we have that background, we're gonna move to our trees. And the very first color we're gonna do is light, well, medium to light purple. And we're gonna add a hill, two hills with this color, and trees. We're gonna start with this big tree, the most visible tree, and then we'll add some smaller ones on this side and some smaller ones on that side. And of course, a little bit of leaves as well. Once we have that, we're gonna move on to our blue tree. So we'll add our blue tree right here, some leaves, and we'll add a blue hill right here as well. Once we have that, we are going to move on to um, our yellow. So I'm gonna dab a bit of yellow here and add it to the tree. And then I'm gonna move to black and I'm gonna add the big tree um, to, sorry, yeah, two of the sections right here on the sides in black. We'll add some grass, then we'll add uh, branches and we'll add some leaves on the branches and then our tire swing and uh, the thing that connects it to the tree. And after that, we're gonna highlight all that with white. So we're gonna highlight the tree to make it look more like a tree bark texture. We're gonna highlight the swing and um, we're going to add some florals onto this black sections. And we're going to do that in pinkish colors, so pink or purple or just pink. And uh, we're going to add some in purple. And here as well, we'll add some there too. So those are just flowers on those hills. So um, you can add them in any color technically. Here they are mostly in pinks and purples, but if you wanna do more like uh, yellows and oranges, go for it, that's okay too. All right. How is everyone else's video? Is it okay? Or because I see a one comment that says uh, video keeps cutting in and out. How is everyone else? Guys, let me know. Can you see me okay? Um, can you hear me okay? All right. So we have a lot of people who have no issues. So guys, whose videos cuts in and out. Maybe it's your internet then. I would say you can just um, hang out with, uh, with us then if you find that it's very difficult to follow like that and then watch from the recording. It, it could be just your internet. All right, perfect, awesome, thank you guys. So let's grab our canvases now. I'll put this one aside. And what we're going to do is we're going to make very light yellow. So put your colors on your palette. I will put all my primaries right away, which is yellow, red, blue, plus black and white. Um, if you would rather not put all of them, you can just use yellow and uh, white for now because that's what we're gonna use right now. All right, so I'm gonna grab uh, should you wear the canvas? You could, yeah. Actually, let's wear the canvas. If you don't have to for this particular painting, because we're not doing linear, we're doing in circular motion, but also why not, right? We might as well. So, okay, let's wear the canvas. So just grab your brush and the biggest brush that you have, or even a cloth, you can dip a cloth in the water and just wet it with a cloth. That's okay too. Let's wet it. Now, if you guys are using paper, you don't have to do this only if you are using canvas. And only if you're using a decent size, a fairly big canvas. If your canvas is small, you don't need to do that. It's not very necessary. However, it wouldn't be a mistake either. Like, it's not going to ruin it for you. So feel free to do that if you want to. Oh, yay. A-R-O-Y-O-N. Thank you. All right, so I went in mine. And guys, if this is your first time and you're not sure why we're doing this, the reason why you would wanna um, wet your canvas is because when we're covering large areas such as background on this painting, it is much, much easier to spread the paint when your canvas is wet. 
Um, if you're using small canvas, again, it wouldn't be a problem. You would have easy time spreading your paint either way, but with the bigger canvases, it is easier to do it on wet. So that's exactly why we're wetting it. And you don't have to keep it wet. And even actually, if you find that it's too drippy, you can just grab your paper towel and lightly go over it to just pick up all those drippy spots so they don't drip down. Because again, we are not using, uh, we're not gonna go in vertical motion breaststrokes, we're gonna go in a circular motion breaststrokes. So you don't want any drips down. So feel free to just grab, pick them up uh, with a paper towel, but it's not crazy necessary. If you don't have that problem with dripping, then you don't need it. Do not wet the back of your canvas, just the front part. Yes, you don't need to save this video. You can just um, say, oh, save the tab open on your device if you prefer. But yeah, you can just, or you can send yourself a link. You can copy link and um, save it that way and come back to watch whenever you can. All right, so now I'm gonna dip my brush in the water and I'm gonna make light yellow. So I'm gonna scoop some white, put it here. And I'll add just a tiny touch of yellow, mix it up, make light yellow. That's okay. If you did front and back, that's not a mistake either. It's totally fine. You did not ruin it. You just did a little bit of extra work. Extra work. Okay. So now with this, I'm going to go at about middle of the camp. So right here. And in a circular motion, I'm going to start adding light yellow. You see it's very light, so I get it, it's pretty hard to see here. But also, as you can see, it's pretty big too. So don't go too small with that. And then actually right away what I'm gonna do is as soon as I have this, I'm gonna wash off my brush and I'm gonna grab straight white. And why I wanna do this right away? Because I want it to blend while my yellow is still wet. I cannot let my yellow dry. It has to be on wet. So as soon as I have it, wash off your brush, grab white and go right around your yellow first. You see, I did about, I would say inch and a half for the size of my canvas of white, and only after that, I'm gonna start blending into this yellow to create a smoother transition between white and yellow. All right, now do you see, it doesn't look like just a yellow spot, it looks like it gradually uh, transitions into white, like it blends into the background, which is exactly what you want. And after that, again, we're gonna wash our brush right away, and then we kinda have to, again, right away blend our last color here because this all three, a yellow, white, light purple, have to be blended on wet. Once it dries, it's very hard to blend. The bottom doesn't have to be um, blended on wet, but this three on top do have to be wetted, uh, blended on wet. So I'm gonna make my third color right away. I can't really wait too long here, but after that I can give you guys some time to catch up for sure. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with white again. I'm gonna scoop some white on the side. Let's put it here. And then I'm gonna add a little bit of red, not too much, do you see? Put it in here. And just a tiny touch of blue, way less than red. You don't need equal parts. Red is more 
a dominant color, you need way less of it. I'm gonna even add a bit more red because my blue took over. So white, then a little bit of red, and then a tiny smidge of blue because again, blue is a more dominant color. You don't need as much of it as red. And with this very, very light purple, I'm gonna go on the edges here. And then again, in a very circular motion, I'm gonna start coloring my edges until I get into my white, and then I'm gonna blend it into that wet white. And now I can give you all some time to catch up because now we don't have to rush. We have these three colors on top. And you see, I'm not going to the bottom. My bottom is um, still uncovered, which is fine because I'm gonna add colors there later. But the top is done, light yellow, white, light purple. And technically you could go a little bit darker for all those colors. I like how light it is, but if you go a shade or two darker than mine, that's all good, so just don't go too dark. And guys, if you have any questions, feel free to ask. I, you don't have black. I did not use black. So for this, you don't need black. Just uh, white, red, and blue. And guys, for red, actually, I forgot to mention, use only pinker based red. So don't use anything that's more like orangey because it's not going to give you very bright color. For this painting, it actually doesn't matter. You can still use more of a dimmer uh, purple. It will work fine, but it is better if you have choice. If you have orangey red and pinker red, Definitely use a pink or red for mixing purple or even pink. Um, for later, instead of black, so right here, you, oops, right here, instead of black, you can use any dark color. So let's say if you have a really, really very dark purple, you can use that. Or if you have a very, very dark blue, you can use that as well. But black, of course, would be most ideal. Yeah, any pink is good. Any pink is great for mixing purple. It's just, um, if your pink is very light, your purple is gonna probably stay on the lighter side as well, which is good. For this painting, you're not really gonna need any dark pinks, uh, sorry, purples. So it should all be good. And when you guys have it, give me a thumbs up, that way I know that we're ready, and then we're gonna move on to this bottom part here. Um, and I did not go around the whole circle in purple. I just went here. Do you see here is completely uncovered? But if you already did go all the way, that's okay. It's not a big deal. We can lay other colors on top, but ideally don't. <laughs> 
Are those acrylic paints? Yes, those are student grade acrylic paints. I'll show you what I'm using here. This is the brand I'm using. It's Start um, Academic Acrylic. So it's student grade acrylic. It's pretty good. All right, I see a couple thumbs ups. That's good. Ready, ready, yes. Okay, great. So now we're gonna move on to our bottom and I'm gonna be using the same exact brush. So I washed off my brush. And now I'm gonna add a couple different colors here. So I'm gonna start with light yellow again. And I'll make a little bit more because I don't have much left. And I'm gonna grab the same light yellow or different. As long as it's light yellow, it's all good. And I'm going to add a couple horizontal brush strokes somewhere around here. But I'm going to wash my brush and I'll make light pink. So I'm going to scoop some white again. I'll put it right here. And I'll grab a little bit of red, mix it in, make pink. Any shade that's on a lighter side, light to medium, is good. Just don't go too crazy dark here. And I'm going to add a couple of brush strokes starting from the bottom. So going from the bottom up. And I will add just a little bit into that yellow too. You see a couple of horizontal brush strokes in yellow, then some red mixed with white um, from the bottom and just a tiny flick on the yellow. And guys, when I overlap other colors, I usually try to keep it very light. So because you don't want it blobby, you want just that very light touch blending, uh, very transparent. What you want to do is you want to have almost dry brush. It's just a tiny, tiny touch of paint on it. So not too much. And also you don't want to push on your brush. You just want to lightly scrape the surface of your canvas. That's all you want to do here. And then I'm going to grab blue here. And it's going to be about medium to uh, medium light blue. So again, I'm going to start with white. I'm going to scoop some white on the side. Then I'm going to add just a little bit of blue there. You see it's about medium, medium light blue. And I'm going to flip that from the right side here. And I will overlap a little my purple, my blue, uh, pink, sorry. And you will see it will start looking purple. And I will overlap my yellow here just a little bit as well. And you see I'm using just a tiny touch of paint. You see it's almost like nothing there. So very, very little of paint. And I'm lightly scraping the surface of my pants. I'm overlapping this. All right, and again, I'm gonna give you guys a couple of minutes to do this. When you have it, let me know, say I'm good to go, I'm ready and so on, and then we'll move to the next step, but no rush. Yeah, guys, so that's the secret of blending. Just use a very little bit of paint on your brush and just lightly scrape your canvas. And all your colors has to be wet. That's why I did all three of them so close together without really breaks in between because it is much, much easier to do this and have a good blending on wet. Once your paint dries, it's much harder. So that's why it's good to do them one after another right away. All right, guys, while I'm waiting for you to, to catch up, I'm gonna quickly get myself a glass of water because I realized that I forgot water and I'm talking so much, but I'll be back in one second.
All right, I'm back with my beer mug with water. How is everyone doing? Do we have it? Are we ready? Well, must be very talented four-year-old. Not ready, that's okay, I can give you another minute. No problem. That's totally fine. All right, I see lots of good to go, so that's good. So then we're gonna move on to our trees and we're going to start with, again, with about medium to light purple. So do you see this tree? That's the first one we're gonna put, but before we do that, we're gonna add two hills on a side. Start by mixing the purple again. And I'm gonna use my large brush here. You guys are free to use either a large brush or um, medium brush, whatever works for you. The shape doesn't matter either. And we're gonna make purple. You can make purple that's slightly darker than this or you can do the exact same. Totally fine. So I'm gonna start with white. I'll get some white. And I'll add some pink, some blue, mix it up. And I have purple. I'm gonna try this one. I'm gonna start with this purple and then if I find that it's a little too light, I will make it darker by adding just a bit more uh, red and a bit more blue. And if I find that's a little bit too dark, I'm gonna add just a bit more white to make it later. But for now, I think this will be a good color. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna start right here and I'm gonna put one line, I'm gonna dab using my brush super, super flat, only because my brush is flat brush as you can see, right? If your brush is rounded, you can dab like this. You don't have to dab flat. But if your brush is flat, you're gonna dab flat. And I'm not gonna take too much paint on my brush, so I'm gonna take just a bit, not too much. And I'm gonna dab on the angle right here. So like this. Do you see how textury it is? That's what you want. You want that texture. So that's my wheel number one. I'm also going to get a second one. And second one is going to go right here. So it's going to start a bit lower and it's going to end a bit lower as well. All right, now I have my two hills. So now I'm gonna put my brush aside. You can wash it or you can um, keep it like that. Depends how fast your paint dries. If your paint dries fast, then wash it off. You don't want paint to dry on your brush because it's gonna ruin your brush. If your paint dries slow, then you can keep your brush with paint for now because we're gonna use it, I would say in about 10 minutes again. So really up to you. Good morning to you as well. And um, 
If you guys are just joining us now, you can either start from the beginning. The YouTube live should give you ability to do that. So you can just rewind to the beginning and start from there. Or if you'd rather just hang out with us for now and do it later, that's okay too. Totally up to you. All right, and so I'm gonna put that brush aside and I'm gonna go to my medium brush. So I'm gonna do my trees with my medium brush, especially the big one, because I'm gonna start with the bigger tree. For the smaller trees, I will be using the top edge of my medium brush, because you can see the top edge is really fine. So it's gonna give me fine lines if I hold my brush like this. However, if your brush is not a square, or you just generally not comfortable using this brush, it's safer to use small brush for the fine trees, but we'll get there. So right now, I'm gonna grab this brush. I'll dip it in the water, and I'll grab that purple again. And I'm gonna put a tree somewhere around here. So here, up on the angle. That's just one line. So now I'm gonna make it bigger because I need the tree to be thicker than that. And again, I'm gonna dip my brush in the water. Then I'm gonna refill with purple and I'm gonna make this tree thicker. Now something to keep in mind when you're doing your trees is you want them to be thicker on the bottom and thinner on top, always. With every single tree, no matter how thick or thin your tree is, it has to be thicker on the bottom where it grows from and thinner on top. So you can use any medium brush for this. It doesn't matter how you hold it either for this particular brush, uh, for this particular tree. Now I will add two branches to it. Now for branches, you wanna use finer brush or if you're using medium square, you're gonna use the top edge of your brush. So let me show you, I'm gonna start from here. Oh, and another thing guys, branches always, always have to grow from the tree out. You cannot start branch from the outside and bring it in. It has to start from the tree trunk and go out. So I'm gonna start it here and bring it out. And you see the branch as well, is thicker where it starts and thinner on the end. Do you see? And I'm gonna put the second one. And again, notice how I'm using my brush. I'm using the top edge of my brush to make fine lines. But if you want to, you can use small brush for this. So you see I'm under here, I'm pushing a little harder and then I'm slowly letting go as I go further. So it turns thicker here and thinner on the end. Yay, Wendy, thank you. So we're using purple, the same purple that we used for the hills. And to mix purple, you're gonna use white. You're gonna start with a base of white. And then you, if you actually have pre-mixed purple, you can just grab white and a little bit of your purple, mix them up. Or um, you can just grab white and then a little bit of red and a little bit of blue, even less than red. So that is my main tree right here. Now I'm gonna do something else. While I'm still, whoops. While I'm still on the same brush, I'm gonna take on a very tip of my brush, just a little bit of white. And with this white, I'm gonna add it on the side of the tree. So on the right side, I'm gonna lighten it up a bit. And again, you don't have to do this with a medium brush if you're not comfortable with that. You can always do that with a small brush too. I would probably even recommend doing it with a small brush. For me personally, I just love this brush. I wanna do everything with this brush. And I can do everything with this brush because this brush is very versatile. But it is safer to do it with a small brush if you have one. But you see, I just added a little highlight to that tree. And then after that, we're gonna move on to smaller trees, but I'll give you guys a second to do this first. Thank you. 
All right, and guys, give me a thumbs up. When you have it, thanks, Amanda. Yeah, guys, give me a thumbs up when you have it. Um, now we'll move to the next step, but no rush at all. Great. So after this, we're going to move to our smaller trees and we're going to add a whole bunch of smaller trees right here. I will be using my medium brush again and I will be using the top edge. I would highly, highly recommend that for smaller trees, you water down your uh, purple. It's much easier to make fine lines when your paint is more liquid. So I definitely, definitely, definitely recommend that. I water down my right now. I just dip my brush in the water and then brought a whole bunch of this water into my purple. And I'm gonna be using top edge of my medium brush, but smaller brush is a safer choice. And we're gonna start from the bottom, all the tree trunks, bring them up. You can make them straight or slightly wavy. Either will work just fine. Remember where you start, you push a little harder and then you slowly let go as you go higher up. So you see I did a couple tree trunks there. So push a little harder, it's gonna be more visible and slowly let go and you will see foggy, gets foggy and disappear into the distance. And right away I'm gonna add a few branches coming out from those tree trunks as well. In the exact same way, you start from the existing tree trunk, always not from the outside in, always from existing out and push a little bit harder where you start and then slowly let go as you go further. And another thing to keep in mind, you see how all my branches are long and flowy? What you don't want to have is a short and stubby branches. Because that will look like someone came with an um, axe or a saw and chopped them off. It's not going to look natural. So make sure all your branches are nice and long and have a good flow to them. And if you already have a short and stubby branches, because that's okay, <laughs> what you could do, just extend them. Just extend them a little and add that flow.
All right, and yay, thank you. And while we're still on these fun trees, we're gonna add a few of those fun trees on this side as well. Now the difference is we can start with the longer ones closer to uh, the edge and then they're gonna get shorter, shorter, shorter as you go here. And um, they're gonna be on a different angle. So if those were on this angle, those are gonna be on the opposite angle. So again, I'm gonna start here. So you see I have the tallest tree here and then I slightly get shorter, shorter, shorter and so on. Can you paint a small monkey on the bottom? Absolutely, yes, 100%. Whatever you wanna add there, go for it. And another tree we're gonna add is going to be bigger. So I actually need a bit more purple because I'm running out. So I'm gonna make a little bit more purple here. So I'm gonna start with white again. Some red and some blue. All right, I made more purple. And now I wanna add one more tree. Similar to that, so it's gonna be thicker one too, but not as thick, maybe a little thinner. And it's gonna go right here. So again, I'm gonna start from the bottom. I'll put a tree trunk first. Make it a little thicker on the bottom. And once I have a tree trunk, that's slightly thicker on the bottom, I'll let a couple of branches there too. All right, now that is it for our purple trees. So you can wash off your brush if you want. If not, um, you can wait and you can add the leaves with it. However, I will wash off this one because I wanna add my leaves with a large brush. And remember I told you, you can um, wash off your brush and you don't have to because we're gonna use it soon. So now is the time. I'm gonna go back to my large brush and I'll grab it again and I'll grab just a little bit of paint on it because I don't want too much paint on it. And what you could do even, if you can't, if you feel like that you find that it's hard for you to grab just a little bit of paint on your brush, you can actually dab it off the extra paint on a paper towel to empty your brush a little bit. And now I'm gonna add leaves so I'm gonna be using my brush super, super flat because I want that texture and transparency. I don't want big blobs. 
So I'm gonna add a bit of leaves on this tree um, and around other trees too. Just a little bit. And generally for this particular step, I would suggest if you have a brush in a really horrible condition, it might be a very good brush for you to use for this step. Because then you will get lots of texture. And do you see how light it is too? So don't use too much paint. And do you see what I'm doing? My brush is pretty good condition, so I'm actually making it I'm making it weird, I'm making it messy to be able to add those messier brush strokes. And with a flat brush and a bit of paint on it, I'm gonna add a couple more in these trees. Very lightly, the key here is lightness. All right, this is good. And as you notice, I'm not really adding anything uh, right here, but I am adding a little bit on this tree on the background. So this is more than enough, so I'm gonna stop with this color. And now I'm gonna wash off my large brush. Because we are done using it, so make sure it's nice and clean. And only done to get away. And again, I'll give you guys a couple minutes. When you have it, let me know. So good to go, give me a thumbs up, and then I'll show you next steps, but no rush. Yes, camera size can be absolutely any. Guys, absolutely, you can rewatch anytime. The video is gonna stay on our page, it's not going anywhere. And you can also um, rewatch sections even right now. If you find that it, you need a bit more time to do every step, you can just scroll back and rewatch that section. That's totally fine. Uh, YouTube gives you that ability even while we are live. Or you can wait until we're done and then you'll have ability to actually pause it with the image on your screen. For leaves, it was exact same purple. So all this, all the trees and leaves are done in exact same color. And the uh, um, islands here. I have a few different shades of purple only because I had to mix it every time because I ran out of purple a couple times. But as long as they're in similar shade, it's great. If you have enough to do it all with exact same batch of purple, even better. All right, guys, let me know when you're ready, but no rush. Okay. 
There is a really close look on it as well. All right, I see more good to go and ready, which is great. Okay, guys, so then I'm going to move on to my next color, which is going to be like a bluey purple. And I'm going to mix this one with my large brush again. Oh, yay, glitter paint. That's awesome. So um, why I'm saying it's not going to be bluey purple, um, sorry, yeah, bluey purple or purpley blue is because it does look like blue, but really it's not straight blue. It has a touch of red that I added, so it does have a very slight tint of purple to it. So I'm going to start by mixing blue, actually. I'm going to... Scoop some white on the side, and I'll add some blue. I would say I would mix about medium blue. It doesn't have to be too light. It has to be darker than what you have in purple. So I would say I would make about medium blue. You see it? I'll say it's about medium blue. And then to that, I'm going to add just a little bit of red, just to give it a hint of warmness. See, it, it didn't turn into purple, but it is a softer blue now, warmer blue which is exactly what I want. And again, I'm gonna mess up my brush, just take a little bit of paint on it, and I will add a second layer right here. So you're not gonna go as high up to cover your purple fully. You still wanna see some of your purple here, but also you wanna have an additional color. So using my brush really flat, I'm gonna add a bit of blue here. And again, you can either uh, wash off your brush after this, or you can just put it aside. You don't have to wash it. In my case, I'm not going to wash it because we're going to use it pretty soon onto um, our leaves on top. So you can just put it away. That's okay, too. Yeah, now I'm going to go to my small brush. I'll dip my small brush in a water. Sorry, not small brush, medium brush. I'll dip my medium brush in a water, and I will add a cream right here very similar to this one it's going to point a different direction so i'm going to start opening tree trunk from somewhere around here up on the center maybe here actually now i'm going to make it thicker Right, so this is good thickness for me. I don't want to mess 
with it anymore. So this is good. I'm going to leave it. Now I'm going to start adding branches. So I'm going to add quite a few branches here. And I'm going to go in here. Again, I'm going to be using the top edge of my medium brush. But if you prefer to use a small brush, go for it. One branch, add one more branch around here. That I'll add one more bigger one right here. And a couple smaller ridges coming up from this one. Yep, that's true. All the colors are in the description if you guys need uh, to take a look there, go for it. So that's pretty much it for this tree. Um, you can, if you want to, have more um, branches here. If you prefer, just keep adding branches, that's totally fine. And um, I'm going to add just a couple of brush strokes right here on this bottom part. To add just a little bit of a darker blue there. Just a touch. Very, very lightly brush it on. I would say even dry brush it on. And after that, I'm going to wash off my medium brush. Ah, uh, yes. The original art is by Dean Sherman. Dean is a friend of ours, and we saw this painting, and we loved it. And we said, Dean, can we just pay you and teach it? And he was like, yes, go for it. So, with Dean's permission, we are teaching his original art book, which I personally think is absolutely gorgeous. All right, how is everyone? Do we have a tree or do we need a couple minutes? Let me know, guys. All right. Yeah, I can definitely show you the finished one, no problem. This is the finished one. This is what we still have to do. 
just so you know where we're going and what we have left here. All right, so now I'm going to add the leaves. Do you remember how we added the leaves with a big brush for our purple? So I'm going to do the same thing for our blue. I'm going to go back to my big brush and make sure before you do that that you wash off your medium brush and put aside. Don't leave your medium brush with paint on it. So again, I'm going to mess it up, make it easy. Then I'm going to take just a little bit of paint, not too much, and I'm going to start adding leaves. So I'm going to start with this corner where I actually have a tree. And again, I'm using my brush super flat because it is a flat brush. But if your brush is not flat, if it's pointy brush, you don't have to use it flat. You can just use it this way. So just add it a little bit here. Now there are a couple spots where I'm gonna add them as well. So that's right here. I know there's no blue tree, but I will dab a little bit of those blue leaves from the edge of the canvas. So not in the middle, just from the edge. A little bit there and a little bit right here. All right, and after that, you can wash off this brush as well. We are done with this color. We're not going to be adding anything else with this particular color. And again, I'll give you guys a couple minutes. When you have it, let me know. But no rush if you need to take. A bit more time, that's okay. How do you remove paint if you make a mistake? Good question. I would say um, if your paint is still wet, if you just did it, if you put something in it, you're like, oh, oh, that's a problem. What you could do, you could just uh, put the corner of your paper towel in water and wash it off. If it's a small spot, you should have no problem just washing it off with a clean, wet paper towel. Otherwise, you will have to wait until it dries and then you can cover it up with paint. But it is easier to wash it off if you realize right away that you don't like it. No problem.
Done, yes. Good job. All right. Then, if we're done with this, um, we can move to other things. Now, before I move to other things, I want to add one little thing here. Yes, I want to make slight and I'm going to be using small brush for this. So I'm going to grab my small brush, dip it in the water, and now to this blue, if you still have a little bit of it left, I'm just going to add a little bit more red. And you see it makes purple that's a bit darker than what we used originally. And with this, I'm just going to add a tiny touch of darker color on this one, on this tree. It shouldn't be too dark, but it should be a little darker. You see just here, and it makes it so much more interesting. And now do you see that tree starts popping out of all the other purple trees? Which is exactly why we did that. And then after that, I'm gonna move on to this tree and I'm gonna add some light yellow again. And again, I'm gonna use my small brush for this. So I'm gonna grab white, add a little bit of yellow, make some light and yellow, sorry, white and yellow. And with this color, I'm going to add a tiny little highlight on the left side of my tree, on the inside, so on blue. So just a little bit. No worries, Deborah. You can start now if you wanted to. You can just uh, start from the beginning. I think you should have that option even while we're alive. You can do it later. That's no problem. All right, guys. And after this, I'm going to move to my medium brush. So I'm going to grab my medium brush and a little bit more of the light yellow. So again, I'll mix some white with some yellow. And I'll mess up my brush again. And I'll dab up right here. So right above this purple here. And you can overlap your purple a little bit too, that's okay. See? A little bit right here. Some yellow. And that's that for this color. And after this, guys, I'm going to move to black. And black, I'm actually going to do with my medium brush as well. So I'm going to dip my brush in a water. And I'll take some black. And I will start by adding this hill in black. So I would say from somewhere around here.
We're going to line down. And then I'm going to color this all in with the black. All right, yay. You're welcome, glad you enjoy it. Yes, we all make mistakes. That is very, very normal. That's our first heel in black. And then I'm going to have two on this side. So I'm going to start with the top one. I also want to see a little bit of purple behind it. So I'm going to start a little lower than that purple. Now I'll line the second one a little bit lower. And then I'll color them in with the black as well. All right, so now I have two of them on both sides. Yeah, totally fine. Glossy back is black is fine, no worries. As long as it's black, it will work. Or as I mentioned earlier, alternatively, you could choose any other very dark color. So uh, because pink, uh, sorry, purple and blue are already present on this painting, you could go with either very, very dark blue or very, very dark purple, that would be okay as well. Now guys, once I have this, I'm gonna add just a little dry brushy uh, shadow Sorry, it's more like a reflection on the water underneath those two. So it was just a little bit less paint on my brush. I'm gonna lightly 
brush on some black underneath here and underneath here. And after that, you can wash off your medium brush. All right, guys, and after this, I'm going to grass it up. So I'm going to add lots of grass to this with my small brush and black paint. And I would highly, highly recommend that you water down your black for this because the wetter, um, the more liquid your black is, the easier it's going to be for you to create the grass. So I already watered down mine, and what I did is just I dripped a few um, drips of water into it, mixed it up. And how I'm going to do my grass is I'm going to flick it from those nails out. You can do it in any direction. You can do it this direction, that direction. In my case, the grass is big, so it's going to go like this. It's not going to go like this. It's going to go like this. So let me show you. You see? Flicking from the inside out with your small brush. And some grass can be um, going one direction, some grass can be going a different direction. We're making lots of grass here, so it's all good. Yes, you can totally play it back, no problem. And I will do the same thing on the other side. I will add grass as well. I'll grass it up, the whole edge. And after that, we can leave those two to dry because before we can add um, our purple and pink flowers there, they have to dry up a little bit. So we're gonna leave them to dry and we'll move on to the trees. But for now, guys, just let me know when you have it and then I'll show you the trees. I'll give you a bit more time for this step. And again, remember, if you feel like you need a bit more time or you just like taking it slowly, and go into your own pace, taking your time. That's okay. You can always scroll back and rewind back even while we are live and we watch certain areas. And once the video is recorded, you're going to be able to also push pause and fix the video in the middle of the screen. That's okay too. I know a lot of people actually prefer that. So it's all good.
Yeah, it does take practice. All of this, all of those techniques, uh, grass technique, trees, branches, the more practice you have, the better they're gonna get. It's all about practice and how many times you do this. Once you do it at least 20 times, your um, hand gets a really good muscle memory and it's gonna be more automatically going for you. So it really is all about practice. Eva, you do want canvas texture show, to show through or don't want to canvas te texture to show through? But overall, if you want canvas texture to show through, uh, use less water. The drier your paint is, the more it's gonna pick up all those bumps on a canvas, so you will see that. If you don't want canvas texture to show through, use more water. So the more liquid you paint this, the more it goes into all the creases and covers all the bumps, so it, it's gonna be a bit more smoother if you use more paint and more water in it than if you use less paint and less water in it, then you will see more canvas texture. I hope that answers your question. If not, let me know. All right, guys, couple more minutes and then we move. All right, now I'm going to move on to our bigger tree on the side and I'm going to go back to my medium brush. So I'm going to grab my medium brush, some black, and I will start opening tree trunk again. And I'm going to go from here up and out. That's right. No mistakes. Only learning opportunities and happy little accidents. So from here, I'm gonna put it here. You can make it straight, you can make it curved, it can probably be up to you. I'll give it a little bit of a curve so it's not so straight. And again, starting with one line, and after that, I'm gonna thicken up the bottom a lot, actually. All right, so I have my tree, and now I'll start adding branches. Again, you can add branches anywhere you want, as many as you want. Just make sure um, you start all of them from the tree trunk and bring them out. And either you can do this with the top edge of your medium brush or with a small brush, whichever you prefer. So one branch right here.
So I placed my um, main branches. Now I'm going to add branches coming out from those branches. All right, so this is enough branches for me. I'm quite happy with this. So I'm gonna stop adding branches. Yes, no worries, guys. Join us whenever you can. The video is gonna stay right here. So whenever you have time, you can do this. And also, while I'm still using black and a medium brush, before I put it away, I'm gonna add the tire. So I'm gonna add the tire, I would say somewhere around here. Ta -da. And now I can wash off my medium brush because I don't want to be using it anymore with black color on it. And then I'm going to take my small brush and I'm going to connect the tire to the tree. It does look like a fun place, I agree. And then I kind of want to do something else before my black tree and my tire dries is I want to take a little bit of white on my small brush and I want to add a little highlight right here on my tire. So just a little bit, that can show you closer. Just a touch. Also want to add highlight on my tree. So only on one side, the side that's closer to the middle. And I'm gonna make it look like a tree bark in a way. So my small brush, and I'll add a couple of lines here. So we're not looking for blending there really. And it's best if you do this while it's still somewhat wet so it blends a little. 
However, if your tree already dried, what you could do, instead of using straight white, use gray. So it's not a problem either way. Just if it's still wet, use white, and if it's dry, use gray. Yes, no worries, guys. If you're um, not sure how to find it tomorrow, you can just follow us on um, here on YouTube. You can subscribe to us and it should pop up on your feed or um, you can save the link to this video. Just literally copy it and send it to yourself in a message or email. That way you don't lose it. But you can just keep the um, your internet browser window with this video open because it's going to be in the exact same place, so it's going to be the same link. Oh no, Kelly. I've done that before. Sorry. You're going to need to make a new tea. Maybe. I don't know. If your brush was clean, then maybe not. If your brush was full of black paint, then yes, definitely a new tea time. So you see guys added highlight here and I added a highlight to our tree as well. Now I want to add a little bit of a um, few leaves on this tree. So I'm going to grab my large brush again and I'm going to grab just a little bit of black and again I'm going to mess it up a little so it's a little messier, not so perfect. And I'm going to add the same technique that we've done uh, leaves for all the other trees. And I'm going to wash off my brush from that right away. And after that, I'm going to move on to adding um, these pinker color flowers 
on the background and on the sides here. In my case, my sides are completely dry. If yours are not dry yet, that's okay. Take your time. You don't have to do this now. You can wait until they dry and do it later. It is better to have them fully dry before you move to the step. I mean, you could do this on wet, but it's going to be a bit muddier color than if you wait until it fully dries. So I would highly suggest that you wait until it dries fully. But I'm going to mix my colors. So I'm going to start with white. So I'm going to scoop some white on the side. Then I'm going to add quite a bit of red to make a saturated um, nice pink. Technically, you could just do it in pink. That will look really good to you. But I personally want it more like a pinky purple. So to that very saturated pink, I'll add just a tiny dot of blue to not make it too purple, but so it has a bit of hint of purple. Now with this color and my medium brush, I'm gonna dab on here. And you can dab on a corner, top edge, however you wanna dab. I'm gonna dab some more right here to make it look like there are trees there, uh, sorry, flowers there. And with the same color and just the corner of my medium brush, I'm gonna dab a little bit right here too, right above the grass to make it look like there are flowers there. You see how small those dabs are? You wanna keep them pretty small. So you can even dab with a small brush or as I'm doing it with a corner of my medium brush, because the corner of, of a square brush will give you a pretty small dabs. And then I'm gonna start dabbing here, and they're more like in a groups of dabs. You can have as many groups of those dabs as you want. It's completely up to you. And again, I'm gonna dab with a corner. I have that. Thanks, Michelle. And I'm going to add some right here too, just a little bit. And then I'm gonna dab some with actual purple. So to the same color, I'm gonna add a little bit more blue to bring it more to a purple color, like a bluey purple this time. Do you see the difference? And I'm gonna add more dabs in this, but I'm not gonna add any dabs here or here, only onto the black sections. And that's no more dabs. So I'm done with dabs here with a color. So no more colorful dabs on those two sections. The only other color I'm going to add there is white. So you can do this with a small brush or the corner of a medium brush as well. Just a little bit of white and just a few little dabs. Do you see very, very little ones? You don't even have to add them everywhere, only if you want to. And then I'll grab my small brush 
a little bit of white paint and I'll finish up by adding white closer to the reflection. So right here on the bottom in between my reflection uh, in black and the actual black hills. So right here on the corner, it's gonna add a little bit of white. Ta-da! And guys, this is pretty much it. After that, the only thing that is left for you here is to sign it. So just pick a good spot and put your name or your initials, anything that you would like, and you're officially done. Now, another thing I would recommend doing here, guys, is if you have done your edges, after you finish, you can go back and you can paint your edges because right now, do you see there are unfinished, you know, weird looking, messy looking edges. So what you could do, you could just grab black and paint your edges with black. That way, um, when you hang your painting, it's gonna look super finished and complete from every angle. It's not gonna have those messy and finished edges. And guys, feel free to ask any questions while I'm here. Ask away. And if you guys wanted to add any other colors here too, you can. You can add some yellow, some oranges, any color that you would like to have on those hills, those flowers here, you're free to add them. Now, once you're all done, if you wanna share with us your results, what you could do, you can post them on our Facebook page. I'm gonna make a thank you post there very shortly um, on um, event page for this painting. I'll send you a link right here. So I just posted the link here. This is for event page on Facebook. And right now all the comments are disabled because we do get a lot of scam comments. So we disable comments before event. So scammers cannot post um, scam links to mislead people. So we disable, we disable all comments, but I will make a post, we'll have comments enabled. So you're free to um, post your paintings underneath that post in comments. So then we will have them all in the same place and everyone who participated can go there and see how they turned out. So you can see the region, sure. There they are. All right, and yay. You're very welcome, thank you for joining. Do I take tips? I do. If you guys had fun and you wanna say thank you by tipping me, I would never say no to that. Tips are always welcome and very much appreciated. Um, I will send you a link right now, I'll put it in chat here in case anyone wants to use it. For sure. Thank you for asking. Okay, great. All right, I posted a tip link if anyone needs it. And thank you guys in advance, I appreciate it. Yay, I'm so glad. Um, if you haven't painted with us before and this is your first time, we actually do 
um, about two free live events every week if you want to join us. And you can see all this upcoming schedule for all our events on Facebook. So if you, I'll actually, I'll send you a link for that too, because it's good to have links. All right, where is it? I'll find it. Okay, so here is the link. I just posted it in live chat. That link is to our Facebook page to event category. So you can see all our upcoming events and we do about two free events, free live events every week. Some of them are on YouTube here and some of them are as Facebook Live. And we also have everyday Zoom events. So if you would prefer to have an ability to actually show your painting in real time, and um, get a live feedback from the artist and just uh, verbally talk <laughs> to your artist and get feedback that way. Zoom is might be a good option for you. And you can find all those Zoom events on our website, which I will post a link as well, because you know, links are helpful. And we have lots of events. We have acrylic paintings, we have oil paintings, we have watercolor paintings, tutorials, and we have a drawing tutorials as well. So a lot of tutorials to choose from. Oh, no. Okay, let me try it again. Hi Mike. <laughs> Thanks for asking. Let me let me try it again. Hmm. Maybe I accidentally cut a letter or something. You know, those things happen. So I send you my PayPal link <laughs> right here. And thank you, I appreciate that. Yeah, sorry guys, I probably cut a letter off a PayPal link or something like that because I was copying and pasting it. So maybe Yeah, I'm glad to hear it came out. All right, any questions, questions, concerns? You're very welcome, thanks for joining me. Yay, it works, awesome, thank you. All right, guys, if you have no questions, I'm going to let you finish this painting in peace. Thank you all for joining me and hope to see you again. Bye, everyone.